Hi everyone, welcome back on my channel. I'm so happy to see you here right now. I would like to talk about my client who came today to my studio because I was like, let's record this because this wasn't really planned. As you will see, I was removing these eyebrows with a laser. I met this client because uh, one of my colleagues uh, who does pedicure, this client came to see her and she wasn't really happy with the eyebrows. So Lutka came to see me and she asked me if I can do something with it. And I saw it's like probably old microblading with a little bit of grayish undertone. And you could also see that her brows were growing this way and the brows, new brows, the new shape was done this way. This is what I would do too, but because of my, all my experience, now I'm trying to be a little bit um, maybe safer with the new shape when my client has her brows, like if the brows grow differently, you know, I try to go as close as possible to the natural brow hair. And you could see here that uh, she had her brows done till here and her brows were growing over here. So she said that she wants to remove them because she does not like the grayish undertone already. And she would like to have her new brows done. And this is a little bit of a problem. She said that she would like to have her brows done, but she does not want to have the same shape. What I want to talk about, this is like a real case from the real life. This is not a model for the YouTube. This is not the most beautiful brows, most beautiful skin. And this is what I have in my studio every day. Let's start from the beginning. First of all, all techniques we do in PMU, we can do in a good way or also in a bad way. It's really important for you to understand what kind of technique you are going to use for the client and also how to do this technique properly. In general, if you do microblading, you do it with a blade comparing to hair stroke where you use my um, machine. So the reason why with the microblading these strokes a little bit more like thicker after some time is because they were done by the blade with a hair stroke technique of course they can become a little bit more like thick after some time but not as thick because with the blade you cut the skin that's the biggest difference and i also think that you can do microblading in a beautiful way but it's really hard and I honestly think there is not a lot of people in PMU who can do this technique on a high level. So if you want to do this kind of brows, better maybe to work with the hair stroke technique because even though everyone is saying that hair stroke is the hardest technique, yes, that's true, but I think it's safer comparing to the blade if you are a beginner. Um, the best would be if you could start from powder brows and then move to hair stroke because you really need to know how to work with the machine properly. But not to have such a thick strokes after some time is better to use hair stroke technique. Second thing what was wrong here was that the color was grayish. So, there is more things what could happen, but I think the worst thing what can happen is if you choose too cool color for the client. In general, you don't want to use cool colors in general for anybody. Not for me, but also not for Fitzpatrick 3 or 4 or 5. You always want to use neutral color or a little bit more warmer. It also depends on what kind of technique you are going to use. So for powder brows, you can use beautiful brown color. For example, if you want neutral, you can still use neutral. But if you are going to work, for example, with hair stroke technique, you should use a little bit warmer color. Because when you go over the same place many times, when you are creating a stroke with the machine, you go a little bit deeper. So when you go a little bit deeper, your neutral color can almost immediately become a cool color. 
this is one of the one of the tips I can give you. I don't do hair stroke yet. I already had like five courses for hair stroke, and you will see vlog very soon when I am taking a fifth um, course. And I still struggle a lot with this technique because I don't have really the time to. Um, practice as much as I should practice. I hope in the very near future I can do some videos about it and you will see my progress in a hair stroke. Right now I am not brave enough to show you how I do um, a hair stroke because when I try to do this pattern it looks more like uh, this thing and not like a brow. So yeah, um, if you are choosing a color for your client make sure that you understand what kind of what kind of undertone your client has if it's cool added undertone or if it's warm undertone because based on this very important information you have to understand what kind of color you will use then if you are beginner because as i see on my youtube there is a lot of beginners if i would be you I would never choose strong pigments and it doesn't matter what kind of technique you are going to do. It, do it doesn't matter if it's microblading, if it's hair stroke, if it's powder brows or whatever. You should use um, maybe pigments where is enough inorganic ingredients or also purely inorganic ingredients but purely inorganic ingredients it is it is a little bit harder to implant them into the skin. So I really love the formulation of the pigment where you can find carbon black, at least a tiny bit, because carbon black is inorganic pigments. It's CI77266, but it behaves a little bit more like organic. It goes quicker into the skin. So if you have inorganic ingredients together with carbon black, this is the best pigment you can have as a beginner or also as an advanced artist because in general with organic ingredients I don't really like this bright effect on the brows. So I would use these kind of pigments. And for my client you could see on this video I removed the brows first time with laser. It was really really good. I really loved the outcome but um, I don't know how it's gonna look after a month and a half because we know that after the laser we can see this uh, huge effect but the brows the color will come back a little bit and then it takes minimum one month and a half till the brows will will get lighter and then we already have another appointment done and uh, we already chose um, a date for another appointment and then in the middle of uh, August we will see how the brows looks like and then based on the result I will know if I can continue with the laser or I should use removal. Sometimes if the brows are um, yellowish it's better to use removal because it is better mainly for the yellow color to use removal, removal um, chemical removal liquid and if you are going to use laser the yellow color I don't think it will work with laser so what I would do I would do if it's going to be yellowish or greenish I would do a removal if it's going to be reddish I'm going to use laser again 532 nanometers and then we will see how it goes because sometimes if there is a lot of organic red it's harder to remove. There is tons of organic red colorants on the market and sometimes some of them we can remove very quickly but some of them it's not so easy to remove. So I hope that it's not going to take ages till I remove this client's eyebrows but I wanted to do this quick video for you so you see what kind of clients I basically have in my studio because I still tattoo a lot and I still work a lot on my clients and this is what is just the basic case when you start working in PMU it's not always pure skin 
not browse done and it's not always easy to do amazing results um, as you also saw on my youtube we already created a lot of videos with very hard skin which is i wouldn't say like a normal thing but i also have a lot of very hard skin clients and permanent makeup can look really easy if you just see instagram and if you just see this superficial stuff but in my opinion, it is really, really hard work. So I hope you will like this video and I hope you can get some more information from it. If you have any questions, you can ask me down in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Bye.